Hi, my name's Kathy Millett, and this week we're continuing looking at how to paint concrete, and this time we're adding rust. So out in the real world, concrete is just exposed to all of the elements, and one thing that particularly stains it is rust. Now, Concrete has iron running through it with its reinforcing bars quite typically, and you sometimes find those exposed with rust, um, especially if it's eaten away or it's spalled. But also, there's a lot of things embedded in concrete that may have iron in them that are then rust. And depending whether they're on the floor, where the rust will pool, or on a wall where it's streak, you get a very different effect. Um, so you need to think about where the rust actually is coming from, and where the water would be coming from, and think about how the two would interact. So this is um, the effect we're after, a little bit of rusty concrete, very common in real life where metal items are bolted into it. And it just, over time, the water runs off and creates this rusty effect. So I'm gonna add um, some rust to these chairs of a rail. And I'm gonna do it using a couple of Life Color liquid pigments. Now, you might remember I reviewed these in a video a while ago and they do sort of run into the edges of things. So I'm just gonna put them on as a little blob onto each of these, probably not that much. And then I can come along and um, take them off again in a bit. Okay, so that's my first color on. And that was Frame Dirt LPW24. So it's a liquid pigment, water-based. And now I'm going to go and put on brake dust, which is a bit more orange. I'm going to put a lot less of that on because it's very orangey and it already looks quite orange here. Um, it will settle down to being something slightly less orangey over time. Okay, so that's all the colour on that I'm going to do. Next, what I need to do is just get this to run into the concrete in a prototypical manner. And it's still a little bit damp. And the way I'm going to do that is using their own um, pigment um, dilutant. It's, it's like thinner. So I'm just going to take this and run it along the edge so that it, um, it kind of mixes in. Okay, and just to get it to tie in just a little bit better with these edges, I'm just going to um, put a stream of water along here and it can just tie in around here. Okay, now this is all just diarrhoea, so I'm just going to leave it all to dry and let it all just sort of ooze around and bleed into itself a bit. Now, I've put this on with um, pigment fix and they're not completely solid so I could go away and redo these again with water if I wanted but the one thing is these don't look quite dark enough so I'm just going to take some brown and um, put a little bit of a, a dark brown on top and then if I want to do any more rather than putting another bit of pigment on which may well cause problems with the um, um, underlying one being moved you can just go over it with a different method so I didn't really want to have to paint these because they're very hard to paint but I'm just gonna do them a little bit so they don't look quite so concrete coloured. This is just a Tamiya, um, it's XF72, it's just a brown. I mean these will be rusted and I'll put another layer on in a minute of rust when this is dried. So we're onto the home stretch doing this last bit of just weathering on these and what I'm gonna do is use some enamels because we haven't used those yet. So I'm gonna start off with some AK, these are streaking grime, they're, they're basically like washes really, um, but they're called streaking grime, they're a little bit thicker, so they don't run quite as much. And the idea is you put a dab on and then you streak it down. Well, I find them quite useful just to dab on and not do a streaking with things like this. So you can see this is quite dark and it's a different solvent to all the rest of this. So when we come to put it on, it shouldn't lift the ones beneath. So here we are, I'm literally just going to dab a little bit onto these, not necessarily a huge amount and not necessarily the same amount on each one. Right, 
right, I've put the dark colour on. Now I just want it to spread a little bit, but not too much. So I've got this, um, this is one of these paints and it's just gone off over the years um, for some reason. So I'm just going to use it just to put a little dab of what's effectively white spirit around these. Um, not a huge amount. And I don't want it to run as far as I did the pigments. I'm really just looking to make these a little bit darker. Um, and I just want this, which is quite delicately put on, to flow into all my gaps. So just little dobs of white spirit will just help it to all sit down and flood down. And you could use MIG thinner, um, white spirit, anything. I'm just using up this old bottle of now defunct, for some reason, paint. It's funny, the rust is just a solid bit at the bottom. Obviously, I didn't use it enough at the right time. And it's just gone off. These things happen. And you can see I'm being a lot more contained with my dabbing on this. And one of the reasons I did two layers of um, sort of work on this with the is I wanted um, just different layers of spread of the sort of relevant colours. So these ones I want to spread around these. I don't want them to go as far. And water just doesn't spread in quite the same way. So I'm quite happy with this. So this is the final result on our rusty concrete. As you can see, there's um, the two different types of rust effect, the uh, pigments that we use that just ran a little bit further and we, we spread out over the whole area. And then the more concentrated, just the dark color around the actual um, rail fittings. Adventures of the Mini Cathy's. Mill scale Cathy gets a little bit chilly. Looks like the real thing, doesn't it? Really good. Yeah. Mm, not bad. Not bad at all. <sighs> Do like a little bit of concrete, me. This is really good. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. You just hurry up and do everything else, it'd be great. Taking her time, isn't she? It's only a little kit. How long is it going to take her? Weeks by the look of it if she goes at this rate. Oh, oh well. Now I just I wonder what Mills Girl Kathy's up to. I haven't seen her in weeks. I'm getting really worried. Mills Girl Kathy's been off looking for her. We haven't found her yet though. She loved this concrete, she loves it. Probably insist we made it out in plaster or something real. When well, hand scale, yeah, I get that, you know, just a bit more text, you can get reality, but I keep telling you, this is only HO. It's quite a bit smaller than your scale. But, you know, she does like perfection. Yes, I hope she's all right. Not as if there's a lot of 1 to 35 men to run off with or anything. Maybe she's having an adventure. night here. Really, really cold. I hope I get rescued soon. I don't know how to beam back. I didn't bring any way to beam back. I'm stuck here. I'm stuck here. Oh no. Be brave. You're middle scale. That means you're military. That means you've got to be tough. 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 I do hope Mills Girl Cathy keeps her spirits up. She's sure to be rescued soon. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, then subscribe to me on YouTube. Alternatively, like me on Facebook, Cathy Millet Modelling, or on my website, kathymillet.co.uk. See you next week when we'll be continuing looking at the next bit on our little shack. <laughs>